welcome in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to Seeds of Knowledge, a broadcast outreach of True Knowledge Ministries International in Mannington, West Virginia, USA. In a moment, you will hear the teaching ministry of Pastor Nick Lally. Please prepare yourself with a Bible and pen and paper to take notes. Following the teaching, our address will be given so you can write us with your prayer request. Now, here is Pastor Nick Lally with today's teaching. You may have an often spirit if you feel like everyone else is bedded in you. He often compares his or her circumstances and situation with everyone else. Boy, is that a big one. We do not dare to classify or compare ourselves with some who condemn themselves when they measure themselves by themselves and compare themselves with themselves. They're not wise. Go over to 2 Corinthians in chapter 10 and we'll read that. It used to be real big in ministry. Years ago, you'd go to a, a minister's conference and you'd hear, it's second sentence only, okay? How many people are in your church? You want to know why? Because ministers evaluate themselves by what they could see. And God evaluates us by what we do. If God commissions us to take care of one couple for the rest of our life, he's pleased with that. You're doing the right thing. Okay. So the world success is by how many people you have. How big is your church? Are, are you listening to me? So we, we don't see that too much anymore. We were at an affair one time, and, you know, you'll get people, you'll get people that'll uh, start out with your ministry, and then they'll go to your family. They want to know your whole history. You know, they want to know if you ever were married before, how many children you had. They try to figure your whole life out. So sometimes, my wife will just stop talking. I'll just give them the whole loaf of bread. And they'll just shut them up, and it's done. It's added away. Okay? You know. How long are you doing this, and how are you doing this? Your children working in there, and how long are you this? I says, here we go. You know? I came to Mannington 17 years ago. I'm in West Virginia 20 years. I married to our wife. Between the two of us, we have nine children. None of our children at this time work in the ministry with us. I give them the whole nine yards. Get them all out of the way so their mind can conceive everything they want to conceive. And if that's the end of their ability, we probably don't have too much to talk about after that. You know, but it don't offend me. Period. You know, it's just immaturity. It's immaturity. You know, you, know, you, don't, you just don't walk up to people and ask them, what's the reason you're asking it? If you ever stop and think to yourself, there really is no reason, except you're nosy. <laughs> I mean, right? What would be the difference? You just met me for the first time at a dinner, how many children I have. Am I going to get a red star or a gold star? You know? <laughs> I mean, you know, come on. You know? Huh? You know? So you, sometimes you just have to tackle all that stuff, get it out of the way, and realize, don't. It's, it's not worth, and it's not even worth evaluating that person by it, okay? So, I, you know, after that, I almost said, well, that person's an idiot. I don't really want to talk to them anyway. I don't think that way at all. I'll be honest with you. God knows I don't think that way. I get it all out of the way and see if there's anything I could sow a seed in there, listen to them, encourage them, okay? You know, it does, it does, but, you know, why do we do that? Why do we do that? Why do we come, you know, and throw all, all of that stuff? You want to know Why? Because there's spirits that want to make you feel like you're not good enough. Try to bring your failures. Okay? And you know what? Some of your failures weren't caused by you. Yeah, some of your failures are, are caused by other people in your life. Are you, are you listening to what I'm saying? So that's the object behind that. People don't know that. When people, you know, say things and you say, oh, it's the devil. It's not like the devil. They say, I'm going to talk for the devil now. You know, it's not like that. It's an open vessel. They have no stability. They have no foundation of the Word of God. As we're looking at these things, hopefully, the next time one of us, you, me, or anybody says something, and it's not going to be something good, or it's not, there's no cause for it, maybe the teaching will come back to us. Like, why are we even asking this person? You know? I mean, do we want to prove something? What, what, what's the reason behind that? And if we stop and think for a moment, we won't fall into that trap. 
Because that's just what it is, a trap. You know, just what it is. A few days ago, I said something. And about five minutes after I said this, oh, God, forgive me. Help me with that. It's a stupid thing to say. No, I'm not going to tell you what it was. <laughs> but you know what? I was so blessed the scene that I heard the voice of God bring it back to my remembrance, and I evaluated it by the word of God, and it was something dumb. You know, really dumb. Sometimes we have a way of saying stupid things when we want to comfort someone. Yeah, and I'll tell you what comforts someone truly is the love of God. Unconditional love. They don't have to do anything to earn your love. You got Corinthians? Look at uh, chapter 10 and verse 12. For we, okay. For we are not bold to class or compare ourselves with, with some of those who condemn them, uh, commend themselves, excuse me, commend themselves. But when, we, when they measure themselves by themselves and compare themselves with themselves, they are without understanding. That's why you got to come to the men's and women's meeting. That's one of the reasons. It's a safeguard for us. It helps us. Instead of comparing ourselves with all the flakies out there or all the people that you work with that don't honor God or all the people that you work with that don't believe the word of God the way you believe it, you get around people and it shows whether you have any love, whether you accept somebody else, you know, iron sharpens iron. Or maybe it'll show you you're critical. You know, maybe Priscilla will say something to me and someone will say something and they'll... Well, you know, that's pretty rotten. Yeah, I always like to use Priscilla. She's a senior. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? Then that's an opportunity. Well, you know, Lord, forgive me for being critical. Because sometimes we think everything's got to be the way we think. Yeah. I don't want you to think like Nick Lally. I want you to think like Christ. Yeah. I want you to have your own understanding of what God wants for you. You know. You know, you might get some of my characteristics and talk with your hands after a while. You never know. But I want you to be, Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. And that's what we got to be formed in us is Christ. So when we get around f affairs like that and stuff, you know, uh, it's good for us to see. Are you, are you listening to me? Maybe it'll, we'll see, you know, uh, sometimes you'll find out that some people are just so intimidated that you're so surprised. You know, that they're drawn back or intimidated. Meanwhile, they seem like they have a bold personality, you know. And then other people just come out of their shell, and they always seem like they're quiet. You'll learn a lot of things about life, you know. There's a big world out there, you know. We can't just stay in this, you know, just me and I. Yeah, it's a big world out there. Hallelujah. Know that horizontal comparison never works. God is no respecter of persons. So he loves... Now I want you to know that everybody always uses that scripture, but there is a scripture after that. He's no respecter of persons of those who, who fear him, who fear the Lord, honor and reverence the Lord. So that comes with something. Okay, because we always read... There's no, no respecter of persons, but it comes with something, okay? It comes with God's no respecter of person to those who fear the Lord, those who honor him and reverence him. He's no respecter of persons. So he loves us all and provides for us according to our needs. Do you know that God loves unbelievers? He, he loves the atheists. He loves the Islam who want to kill us. He loves the, the Buddhists who serve uh, uh, Buddha, uh, he, lo he loves everyone. Isn't that hard to understand? God loves everyone. Okay, but he don't approve of their actions. Okay, so God is love. You know, God is love. God is, is what, that's, that's what separates Christianity from every other religion in the world, is God is love. We don't always show God's love. We're working on it. Amen? And a lot of things that we think is God's love is really not God's love. Like that time that person put that thing on Facebook that made my hair stand up, you know? Said we shouldn't, uh, we shouldn't rejoice when another dies. It was Ben Laden that died. Did I say his name right? Ben Laden, who, you know, who they killed, you know? 
And, uh, well, Christians should never rejoice when anybody else, you know, because uh, someone wrote, another minister wrote, well, he's not with his seven virgins or whatever they promise now, but he's in hell. And this other one wrote back that we shouldn't do anything like that as Christians. You know, and another person came, oh, I wrote a big one about that big, about 11, 12 o'clock at night. It stirred me up. Yeah, it stirred me up. And another person wrote, well, you know, they did rejoice when uh, uh, David killed the giant. You know. You see the stupidity of their false love of, of Christianity? That's a, that's a maniac murderer who, who killed our firemen, killed people. And he was behind all of that stuff in the Twin Towers and everything. You know. And see, that's not lo the love of Christ. That's not the love of Christ. Do you forget that our Lord and Savior th knocked over all those tables in the temple? Amen. Yeah. That's not the love of Christ. Uh, you understand what I'm saying? But there is a love that we should have, a genuine love on the inside of us that we're developing. Amen? Amen. So he loves us all and provides us according to our needs. If we're looking up, then we have no need to look around and compare ourselves with others. And that's a good point because so many times we compare ourselves with other people. Inside the church and outside the church, we're comparing with other people. Boy, they live like that, and look how blessed they are. What do you call blessed? What do you call blessed? Because if you think blessed is a brand new car, you can get one with no money down. I mean, is that blessed? Just because there's no money down? Are you, are you listening to me? What do you call blessed? How are you relating people that are blessed? They don't ever go to church and they're always blessed. They're always healthy. They're always this. They're always that. I want you to know something. When I used to snort one to three grams of cocaine a day, I know it's a lifetime back. But you know what? I was never sick. I was never sick. I was too high to be sick. Are you listening to me? I was numb. I was never sick. I mean, so what are you going to say? How blessed is he? You see what I'm saying? All outward judgments that make no sense at all. No sense at all. Because the bottom line is what's taking place inside you. And the devil wants to bring torment to Christians. Wants to make you feel unworthy, not good enough. Look at everybody else. Look how they are. I know people that have never got sick all their life, and the first time they got sick, they dropped dead. And they didn't even know the Lord Jesus Christ at that time when they dropped dead. Never got a cold, never got nothing their whole life, 50-something years old. No, older than that, excuse me. Never got sick. And when they got sick, boom. Just like that. You know. How do we rate things? You know, we have no, no, no kind of measuring that we rate all these things by. So don't look this way. Look up. How's our relationship with the Lord? Okay? Stop looking this way. This is why we have the whole nation in debt. Everybody's in competition with one another, whether they know it or not. You know? They went on a vacation. I'm going to go on a vacation. Well, maybe they couldn't afford it, and you shouldn't this year, but you're going to go anyway just to prove if they can, I can. What stupidity. Amen? What are the true blessings? Peace. Amen? Because I'll tell you, I have a reality. One day, all my muscle cars are going to mean nothing. They'll be sitting there without me. Pfft, gone, just like that. So for me to think that's my future and my blessings, although I enjoy them, or my farm, or anything else, you got your values messed up. You know, you got your values, but you haven't come to the place yet what true prosperity is. Okay. Need to watch that M1020 and N28 a few times. Need to watch that a few times. Get a reality of what hell is. Well, the biggest reality we can make of it. I mean, it's more than we can even comprehend, I'm sure. Okay, so we don't want to do that. We don't want to compare ourselves with others. Our vertical relationship with God through Jesus Christ puts us all in his family with all the benefits and blessings that he ensures. Our horizontal relationships can never provide us 
with the security we need to spelling an orphan spirit because that's one of the biggest demands we put on relationships in marriages, mothers and fathers and, and daughters and brothers and sisters. We put a demand this way that the other per human beings don't even have the ability to fulfill in us. And we put demands on them that, that are unreachable. Unreachable. Okay? Unre I found out this. You have a good relationship this way, you're going to have a wonderful one this way. My wife and I, our relationship just gets better and better every day. Better and better every single day. I mean that. I'm not just preaching some story. I mean it. Why? Because we're getting better and better this way. We're understanding more about our Heavenly Father than we did before. We know it's not because we get up and preach or we go do this and go that. We're in the family of God. And God wants us all to know that. You're in the family of God. You don't have to perform. You don't have to perform for your Heavenly Father. Okay? Some things you'll have to perform for. Relationships on planet Earth, your job, your demands, your mind. But not with our Heavenly Father. You don't have to perform. So if we learn to keep these two things separate, we'll be a lot better off. And the enemy won't have our play in our mind to come after us with things. Well, look at them. And, and look at this. And look what they have. And, and I've been believing for that for years. And why isn't my son? Why isn't my daughter? Why isn't my job? On and on and on and on and on. You're going to the wrong one to plead your case. Yeah. Amen. You need to have the promises of God and go to him. Yeah. Because he's on your side. He wants the best for you. You have to come to the place to realize he's, it's all waiting for you. Always waiting. And don't listen to the people. that I fellowship with people and have no arguments. I fellowship with people that don't believe in the rapture. I fellowship with people that think you shouldn't have any more than just enough. Okay? All these different denials. I don't have arguments with them. You know? Because I know what I believe. And it doesn't bother me what they believe. And I know one thing. They'll only get what they believe, and I will get what I believe. I actually believe if you don't believe in the rapture, you're not going. How could you make a statement like that? Because everything is by faith. I didn't say you're going to lose your salvation. I said you're not going in the rapture. You know, now they have replacement theology. That's the new one these days. Replacement theology is there is no more rapture, and this is hell. Everything that's happening is from when Jesus came. It's called replacement theology. Very big. Very big. And where's the devil use it? He's using it because now ministers have not only children, but they have grandchildren and great-grandchildren. So he goes into their soul, and he picks at them to say, well, don't you want your children to get all this and have a good life on earth? If Jesus come and they have nothing to live for. You would think someone would recognize a dumb lie like that. That means earth is better than heaven. Whew. And we're going to have a new, a new heaven and a new earth. But that's how that thing gets in. Any way it could get in. You know, ministers, we're just people. We're not no special thing. We're just people. Are you listening to me? So the same thing he was. So you get into your, he gets into where? The private pockets. The grand, you know the grandchildren make some of you dumb. Did I, was that a good word to use, dumb? You got a better word? Foolish? Soulish. Yeah. I mean, you just flip out. <laughs> it's never going to change. Carl, you're here a long time, right? We used to have beautiful young children up here. We had to move them out of the front seat because we're worshiping the Lord and the people in the back are all <laughs> they're worshiping the babies. Go to the park if you want to like them like that. Yeah, go, go over and do something with them. Why when we're worshiping the Lord? It's an offense against God. Amen. Not to the social church, to the holy church. Amen. So what did we do? The parents had no problem. We said, please sit in the back. We're at Tim and Sherry. Sit in the back. Put the kids back there because the people can't handle themselves. It wasn't the kids. The kids were, the children weren't affecting God. Uh-uh. It was the people. We'll have that all our life. It's called your soul. Are you, are you listening to me? You know, and there's a time and place to enjoy that. But it's not when we're in praise and worship. You know? So these are all of the things that we're talking about. These are all the things. You remember, Carl? Carl remembers. Yep, 
I see them back there. I remember all those things. <clears throat> and you know what? Those people didn't get offended. Those people didn't get offended. You remember years ago, uh, Micah was in the sanctuary when he was a, a little guy. Dr. Summerall says, get that child out of here. Can't you tell he don't want to be here? <laughs> he screamed out because Micah was making noise, right? He said, right for, he said, get that child out of here. Can't you tell he don't want to be here? Take him to the nursery where he belongs. Take him to children's church. My, my, my. Doing ceremonies and you hear kids giggling and screaming and people are going... And there's ceremonies going on. You see it at what? You see it in all things. Steals. It's not the baby. It's the adults. It steals the whole blessing of God of what's taking place. Amen? Okay. It's probably for someone on TV. You know that. They say, I'm never going to, I'm never bringing my children to that church. <laughs> we have a wonderful children's church. Amen. Hallelujah. You know what happened? As soon as they hugged me, I, I felt it. I knew. I says, God is doing a work over there in the children's church. That's a prayer that's been answered. I told you a few months back. You probably don't remember. I says, I'm hoping they're going to get all over us. Us who got lukewarm. I'm talking to the curtain. You know that. Lukewarm. Amen. And he's doing it. <laughs> Horizontal relationships can never provide us with the security that we need to, dis, uh, to dispelling an orphan spirit. We need to remember that. Uh, we're going to close now, okay, uh, because we want to have a little time for prayer. I don't think I did in our last service because I really got wired up and kept going. I know that's not my norm, but I really did. Oh, boy, I heard him. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> and let me close with this thought here. Romans 12. We'll pick up uh, next time. Romans 14, verse 12. So then let each one of us give an account of himself to God. Therefore, let us not judge one another anymore, but rather determine this, not to put an obstacle or a stumbling block in my brother's way. Listen to me. Uh, I'm at an affair yesterday. Oh, it was a wedding. And... Uh, uh, there was no drink served there. It was, you know, it was a, a, a Pentecostal Christian type wedding, uh, alcohol drinks. And we were talking about something, and uh, the minister next to me said how, you know, us Italians, we grew up on wine. You know, I mean, from a little guy, you get wine at the table. That's just part of the culture of true Italians, the real Italians that come off the boat. Okay. Yeah, the boat from Italy. Yeah. And uh, so... Uh, I said, you better not let Jack Van Nippy hear, hear you say that, I said, because he was just preaching the other day. He's got 217 scriptures, I think he said, about not drinking wine. He was talking about another minister having a little wine for his stomach. You know, I don't let anything offend me if someone drinks or they don't drink, okay? Are you listening to me? There's two sides of everything, you know. We hang out with Catholics, they drink. We go to the St. Mary's Inn, they give you free passes to go to the bar and have a drink, you know? And we tell them, you know, we don't want that, we don't drink. Well, you could have a, a soda anyway. Well, we'll have a soda from the machine. We don't need to go to the bar to have a soda. Amen? Okay, I don't need that stuff. Are you listening to me? It, you know, why do you need it? Because it influences my mind to do the wrong things or not know what I'm doing, okay? But... To the cat, I don't go, you know, I wouldn't go there then if I felt there was something wrong. Let them do what they want. Stop trying to live someone else's life. Live on your convictions and not on somebody else's. Amen? Live on someone else's convictions. You know, they are Christians, the ones who really know the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, uh, whether it be that or whether it be something else on, you know, I see people that dress and I, I say, man, Mine wouldn't dress like that because I don't find it appropriate, okay? But that's my taste, and that's my call if it was my affair. Are you listening? And you're entitled to that same thing. But don't be critical and judgmental by what someone else does, whether they're really a Christian or not. Stop judging other people. Don't even judge a person whether they're Christian because they curse. I know Christians who curse. 
And they curse in front of me when they're talking to me. And I know they're born again. Their tongue hasn't been born again yet. But they're born again. Okay. You can curse if you want to. Hey. <laughs> and so could I. What I'm saying is we got to get off this here and go to this one here. It's a little deeper than all of these things. And I'm just using them as an illustration. I don't believe in drinking, you know. Uh, even some of our friends from the, uh, another church, uh, was, I think Amanda was telling me that they make their own beer. If they're watching, they'll know who they are. And, and behind me, they go into Amanda like this. Because <laughs> they watch my preaching on TV. They, did, they wanted her to tell, don't tell them we make beer. You know, <laughs> but they brought it all to the church and gave it away, right? <laughs> you know, don't tell them they're wonderful people. You know, wonderful people. I'm not offended by that. I don't think any less of them because of that. My, 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 we got to stop with this here because we got to have this here and it'll change our view on, on people. Amen. Father, we thank you for the word that's come forth. In Jesus' name we pray. Help us, Lord. Help us to see those areas of our life that this spirit would take authority over our mind and steal the blessings of God out of our life. Father, anything that's the philosophy of man, whether it be Nick Lally or be this man who put these, uh, uh, this book together and these paragraphs, let it fall to the ground and produce naught. But every word that proceed out of the mouth of God by the Holy Spirit and the written word, let it take root in our heart to help us to be those men and women you called us to be that we won't have to be betrayed and belittled and we won't have to be uh, stolen from and, and, uh, and uh, all, the, all the things that this attitude, this spirit of an orphan steals from us that we don't even know we're worthy to go to our Heavenly Father. We ask you, Lord, to be, let them be rooted in our heart and help us to take one day at a time and to, to bring those things out of our life. I pray now, Holy Spirit, that you'd bring back to remembrance to any of us through today's teaching, situations, people, affairs, critical judgments. Bring it back to us because you're not the condemner. You're the teacher. You're the one who brings us up higher. And the devil comes to steal and he steals through wrong thinking. Help us, Lord, to see that in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, for that anointing to set the people free that, that see that in their life today. In Jesus' name, number one. Thanks for listening today to Seeds of Knowledge. We would like to hear from you. Write us at TKM PO Box 46, Mannington, West Virginia, 26582. That's TKM PO Box 46, Mannington, spelled M-A-N-N-I-N-G-T-O-N, West Virginia, abbreviated W-V, 26582. You can email us at tkm at westco.net. Westco is spelled W-E-S-T-C-O. Be sure to visit our website at www.tkmi.org or you can hear this broadcast again or a wide selection of other teachings by Pastor Nick. Until our next broadcast, may God bless you and meet your every need.